Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. Today's video is going to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that because I'm going to actually show you how to sew the pillowcase with the magic kind of um, finishing to it. It's really easier than what it might look. Okay, now my battery is flashing, so I don't know if this is going to last or not, but we're going to give it a try. Okay, um, well, yesterday I wanted to use my notebook to do a few little things that I wanted to tell you. I had watched, the other day, I had watched um, Bob on Mountain Crest Farms. Is that what it is, Jim? Mm -hmm. Mountain Crest Farms. I got it! Hey! Ooh I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I think that's pretty what it is. You can look it up if you want on my notebook. Here's my, oh, I can look it up on my notebook. I, I'm pretty sure it is. I'll look in the M's. I have a cheat book, people. I had used to have cheat people, cheat, paid, cheat um, paper. Now I've got a cheat book. My husband suggested I put them all in this book, and it sure has made, made it a lot easier. Let me see where Bob is. Bob, 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 Bob. There you are, Mountain Crest Farms. Yes, it is Mountain Crest Farms. Well, okay, Bob. You were talking on your video about college versus trade school. Well, I have to tell you, my kids went to trade school except for one. She went to college, and now she's got debt, the one that went to college. And she's not even, like you had said in your video, they are the most educated waitresses or waiters, but she didn't, she's not doing that. She's actually working at a school, and she does get to teach. That's what she was, went to school for. To, she was going to become a teacher of the Spanish language. Well, she's got a bachelor's degree in Spanish, so she does teach when they need a teacher. She, is, she, is, she can teach, um, so that's what she does. Um, but anyways, this trade school stuff... My other kids went to a trade school, and they are doing very well. My one daughter, she actually is the assistant teacher through the BOCES program, which is a, a trade school that you can go into when you're in 11th grade here. You can apply to go to it. And it's part of your senior, junior and senior year. Well, she's the assistant teacher for the cosmetology course. Now, she was a cosmetology student at one time. And so she will probably have to take a few college courses, but they give her the job um, to be the assistant teacher as she is there. And I think if she takes the college courses, then she can become the teacher if the teacher should leave. And I think they may help her. With and they probably will help her with some of her expenses, which is nice, too. But um, what I wanted to say about the trade schools, now, like, I, my husband, I have to tell you, he, he didn't go to school for mechanics, but he did go to a trade school. And how many people, when they buy a car and the car transmission goes out, if it's an automatic transmission, how many people put an automatic transmis transmission back in? Most everybody, except for my husband. He decided he didn't want an automatic transmission. He wanted a standard transmission. So he changed his little Pinto years ago into a standard Pinto, trans standard transmission. So that meant he had to put a clutch in and do whatever else that goes with a standard car. Okay, now... I had mentioned that he had bought a uh, ATV on our anniversary. He bought this thing. And he says it's a good deal. A good deal for a broken machine. The machine wasn't even running, and he bought it. But in his mind, he was thinking he can fix it. Well, today it is running and he put it together all we're waiting for now is the little part for the ignition key because the one that's there it works but it doesn't work so you have to kind of fiddle with it so he he's ordered a new one so that that can go in and that's probably the cheapest part that he's ordered i don't think it's as much, very much but there was a very expensive part in there and the part that they said wasn't working works the part that they they didn't mention was not even in the machine. He had to print out the schematic, schematrics 
schematics. Oh, schematics. Sorry. I don't know. It's a bunch of lines with, I don't know, it's just, it looks like a big mess. But anyways, he had to trace it back to see what he really needed. And then he um, ordered that part and put that part in. So now the machine works. And it was, it's an AT, I said, how come ours says ATP? And he says, well, because it's a pickup instead of it's just an all-terrain pickup. All -terrain pickup instead of just an all-terrain vehicle. So that's, and it works. So now that expensive broken thing is now an expensive working thing, which is good that it works. Okay, I wanted to talk also about getting a loan. Um, when I was when I was doing daycare, this was this, this was really it surprised me. I was doing daycare, and when you're a daycare provider, you do make pretty good money. And when I went to the bank because I wanted to get a loan to um, side my house, and um, so I went to the bank, and they actually accepted my daycare finances so I was able to get a loan which was the first time I ever applied for a loan and then there was a time that when we were traveling the bank lady said you know you really shouldn't use your debit card when you're traveling you should have a credit card well we didn't have a credit card we had just the debit card and the reason they don't want you to use your debit card is you might keep more money in there than than typically should be in there and anybody that uses that card could just empty your account because they've got your numbers. But if you had a credit card, it's kind of insured to where if more was taken out, they can get you your money back. So, but she said to me, don't be surprised when you apply for the credit card, you might be denied. Well, that was a really shocker because I had always paid everything cash or used my debit card or used a check and I thought I could be denied. I says, what do you do if you get denied? She said, well, then you would put the money up for the credit card and use your own money for a year and then they would give you, then they probably would approve you. Well, I was lucky, they approved me, but not for a whole lot, for like, I think it was $1,500, which is plenty because we only used it when we would go traveling and we'd use it to buy gas or pay for the hotel. And every six months we would go on vacation. And every six months we would get a letter from them saying that, if you, that we hadn't used our card and um, if you've lost it to please let them know. Well, we only used it once every six months. So the other six months it was laying quiet. Okay, that was, I guess, everything I wanted to say. And also, oh wait, there was one more thing. This was where I get a lot of people that will say to me, they say, I've, ex I've subscribed to you, now please subscribe back. Well, a lot of them have their subscriptions private. And my numbers aren't going up, so in my mind, they're just saying it, hoping that I will click on theirs. I have to watch their videos and if I really like you and you've got it, your subscriptions private then I will subscribe but if I find that you're not really something that I would watch and your subscription is private chances are I'm not going to subscribe I will probably watch your video anyways because anybody that comments on mine I do go and watch that I watch all of those videos sometimes it takes me hours to do my comments because I will read your comment comment back to your comment then I click on you and it goes to a video and if you have a new video out I'm watching the video so it takes me a long time by the time I get done it might take me probably three to four hours to actually do my comments which is a long time when um, because I'm commenting and then I'm also watching. Okay, let's go do the pillowcase before this gets too long. I'm going to use the GoPro for this because I think you could see better if I use that. So we'll just go do that and then I'll come back to here to say goodbye when it's time. Don't go yet if you want to know how to make the pillow. Here we go. Again, we're in my kitchen and what's my kitchen got on it now? More stuff. I, I wanted to show you how to make this pillow that we made before. 
and I'm going to show the, the instructions and I'll read them to you but this is the this is the pillow Here you want to hold the camera Jim because I have to use two hands okay this is what I've done I now when I cut this material I've already cut it and because this part was too small I made I made it big enough I, I joined two pieces together so that I would have it big enough and what you're supposed to do is you cut the the piece that you want your pillow to be and then this is the the top part this is this part the the fancy border. the border yeah okay and I'm making this pillow this little tiny thing because it's small I'm going to put it on this baby pillow. Whoops, got under my thing. This baby pillow that has been around for 29 years or 28, 28 years. It's been around. It's been around a long time. It's been kicked around, pushed around. So now what you're going to do is you take your border piece and your main piece and you Nothing. pin the right sides together, which I have done. I've pinned them together. Then... It helps if you have somebody helping you. You roll this bottom. You're gonna roll, roll. Whoops, wait a minute, we're on the wrong side. It's gotta be the other way. Whoops, flip her over. See, I'm almost made a mistake. Good thing I noticed. Okay, you roll this and you roll it kind of small. Don't roll it too big. And it hel it's helpful if you have three hands <laughs> instead of two. And you keep going, keep going, keep going until you get halfway on there. Okay, stop. Then you're going to take this piece that was underneath and you're going to bring it up to the other, to the edge. See, I brought it up. Then these pins that I have here, I'm going to take them out and put them on there. So now it's, co it's connecting that piece that was underneath. The piece I rolled is inside. You want to make sure it's not too high up because if it gets too high up, you'll end up sewing it and you don't want to sew that. Okay, let go so I can move it. So I can reach. There we go. And you pin these. And these pins that I'm using, these are quilter's pins. I like them because they're longer. If you have quilter's pins, that's good. If not, use just any pin. Or you could use a safety pin if you don't have any any um and some people use things that are not even pins they use clips okay now we're going to go over to the sewing machine turn that on okay now i'm going to stand to do this normally you would sit but i'm going to stand because eh, it's on the counter and i've got my presser foot on the floor what you do is you put this underneath and you're going to sew it you go forward always go forward and always reverse a little this way it locks the stitch. And this is with a straight stitch. And I don't sew over pins because I'm afraid of breaking the needle. So I take them out. you want to do a back stitch again and then let it run off the thing now my machine has a cutter on the back side up here somewhere I don't know it's up when I do it I find it it's right there <laughs> and you can cut it there or you use a pair of scissors which we used a pair of scissors at the at the library because nobody knew where the cutting part was on the thing. Okay, now I'm going to cut, let me cut this other thread off. Oh, and notice, I have a baby on my counter. I have other things on my counter. Oh, there's always something. Okay. Okay, now that you've got your thing like this, see, it's, it's, it's like a tube. Now we're going to take this side and I'm just going to pull. And it's going to turn it around. 
we hope it will do it but it's gonna go in there this is why you don't want to make it too small because you wouldn't be able to pull and it flips it around for you pulls it right through okay so there's that there's the back and then this you would iron but and you unroll what you just rolled okay this is the right side of the pillow and see there's the pillow isn't that pretty i should go iron this because Otherwise, it won't be as nice. I will go iron it. So we'll have to stop because I'm not going to bring you where the iron is. Okay. Okay, I've ironed it. And this is the right side. And this is the wrong side. It's just a little bit lighter. It's hard to tell on this material. Okay, now what you want to do is put right sides together. So you fold it so it's right sides together. And what I do is I pin it. I will pin it all the way around. Mainly because I'm always afraid that when I sew, it's going to slip. Okay, once it's pinned, now they say you're supposed to fold it, but what I like to do, I found it easier, if I go to the machine, I go back to the machine, and what I do is I stitch around, I stitch around and then I fold because it makes it easier. because it's got a raw edge you want to fold I use the I use that stitch line as my fold line and then I fold over again and it just helps me to do this you don't you can do this without stitching it it's up to you turn it around stick your arm in put 
your corners and pull it through. Well, for guessing, I did pretty good. About the size of this one. It's all guesses. There you go. There's a cute little pillow. Now it looks like a pillow that somebody might want to use because it's pretty. And it's done. And this is the, you can't tell the right side from the wrong side. And you don't have any raw edges that are going to ravel because we encased them all. Very good, that's it. Okay, we're done. That's how you make the pillowcase. I hope that it was um, clear enough. I should give you the um, instructions. Where's the instructions so that they know how big to make a regular size pillowcase? Thank you. If you're going to make a regular size pillowcase, Whoa, I dropped the paper. Okay. Okay, if you're going to make a regular size pillowcase, these are the dimensions you're going to need. For the strip that's on top, that um, plain color that I used, a plain color, you could use a print or you could use whatever you want. Um, that one is 10 inches by 41 inches. And you cut one of those. And then the, the pillow body, that's right, that's the word I was looking for. The body, oh gosh, I feel a burp coming. <laughs> oh no. Um, the body of the pillowcase is 26 and a half inches by 41 inches. And that's a rectangle. The other one was a strip. And what, what you can do is when you pin them together, and if one of them is just a hair longer than the other, you can fold it and, and even it up so that it's um, even. So if in case you, because the cutting part is the worst part of it all, I think. The rest of it, the sewing part is so easy. And then when you, when you um, put right sides together, pin it, and then roll it, and with that other little piece that's underneath the strip, you can pin it up, but don't make it. Don't leave yourself a lot of space because the more space you have, the easier it pulls out. If it's too tight, if it's too close to the where you're going to stitch, you, you'll have a hard time getting it out. So that's the pillowcase, and I hope you enjoy. It was really, it's really very easy to make. You would be faster probably than I was trying to do it. I did one earlier today, and um, then I thought, well, maybe I should show you how, and I thought I will do it with a littler pillowcase. Because I I'm using scrap material. This is all scrap material. There's these pillowcases can't even have a mate because they're just scrap material. Well, you have a great day, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.